In this week's Blizz Pro Weekly, changes coming to Siege of Orgrimmar rating, David Kim answers balance questions in StarCraft II, Diablo fans foam at the mouth over the announced enchanting changes in Diablo III, Hearthstone's reconnect feature is coming soon, and what additional heroes would you like to see in Hearthstone? Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Pro Weekly. As always, I'm your host, the fantastically bearded and awesomely handsome Chris the Beard Arnone. Now, I want to start this episode off with something a little special, all right? We got some fan emails. Yes, we have fans, and yes, they send us email. Anyway, so the first one is from Love Beardy Men. I love that. that that's great. So they asked, how do you grow your beard so lustrous, manly, and handsome? To which I say, well, you know, well, I eat right, I sleep soundly, and I bathe in the blood of my enemies every morning. It really does wonders for the hair follicles. Next, got a message from Little X, Big X, Batman Boobs, Big X, Little X. I, I don't... Um, anyway, their message said, OMG, you are so cool. How can I be cool like you? Well, first off, stop obsessing over Batman's boobs. He's on a mission, damn it. All right, Schumacher put nipples on the bat suit, yes, but that was a farce. That is not the real Batman. The real Batman has hairy, masculine pecs of steel and fists in place of those useless nipples. Second... Learn to spell and get rid of those extra X's. They don't make sense. All right, anyway, enough fan email for now. But don't worry, we'll come back to it after we talk a little bit about Blizzard. So first up, the Blizzard online store has quietly reopened. No big announcement, but there it is. It's allowing shoppers to get their hands on physical Blizzard products again. Do note, however, that with the in-game store for World of Warcraft, digital products like mounts and pets are not accessible through this gear store. This is strictly t-shirts, posters, music CDs, shirts, pennants, plush griffins. Okay, there's actually a lot of shit on there. It's pretty cool. Now, aside from the new layout, as opposed to, you know, back when it used to be around, and categories for Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm products, the major new thing for the store appears to be the Caverns of Time category which offers past BlizzCon exclusives for sale. So if you're really bummed that you missed out on the Mega Bloks Battle Cruiser back in 2011, here's your chance. Another new feature, you can leave reviews for products. I fully expect someone to go ape shit reviewing the Kerrigan Fungo Pop figurine. You can access the new store by visiting gear.blizzard.com. Now, also today, Activision Blizzard had its quarterly earnings call. Not a lot of news for fans came out of it, mostly just saying that things were on track, which is good stuff. However, one disappointing piece of news. The World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor release is looking at the back half of 2014, so we're looking more at Q3 release rather than Q2. All right, let's get specific. Let's talk World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. All right, one of the changes coming with Warlords of Draenor is how raiding will work. Now, there will still be your normal looking for raid with no changes to it. Current flex rating will become normal rating, where players will be able to flex between 10 and 25 players. The current normal rating will become heroic, 10 to 25 players, and then there will be mythic, which is a 20-player raid. And one of the questions asked to lead encounter designer uh, Ian Hazakostis, I hope I, did spell, I pronounced that right, on Twitter was, in Warlords, will Siege of Orgrimmar Flex still be available at 100, or will it disappear like LFR? Ian responded with, we're actually going to convert Siege of Orgrimmar to the new rate system in 6.0, so currently Flex will just be normal and won't be going away. To clarify, this means that Siege of Orgrimmar LFR will stay the same. Flex will be renamed to Normal, Normal renamed to Her Heroic. Now, there's no indication at this point what happens to the existing Siege of Orgrimmar Heroic. If it's renamed to Mythic, but keeps the current 10 to 25 sizes, which would be confusing, but if it gets the 20-man size while people are still working at existing sizes, that could be pretty disruptive, even with advance notice. Now, we will keep you up to date as we learn more about Siege of Orgrimmar changes closer to the expansion release. Now, if you're one of those crazies like JR, who enjoys pet battles like nothing else on Earth, there's news for you on the Warlords of Draenor front. Official confirmation has come from senior game designer Jonathan LeCraft that the level cap will remain at 25 for pets in the next expansion. 
This has some mixed feelings from people so far. Some people are happy they won't have to continue leveling their pets after they've you know already maxed them out and can focus on content when the Warlords releases. However, for some pet enthusiasts, the decision means less to do unless more information regarding pet battles is presented down the road. What are your thoughts? Would you like to see the level cap increase for pet battles in the future? Do you think it's just right the way it is? Let us know in the comments. We love reading those comments. Next, let's talk StarCraft II. You want a piece of me, boy? So this week, the StarCraft community was given a rare treat, a chance to ask game balance designer David Kim some questions about balance specifically. Now, Kim was able to pick out about 10 of the questions to answer, and we have a post, of course, on blizzpro.com that goes in-depth and analyzes each one of his answers with predictions. Of course, check the show notes right down there below for links to the full analysis. Now, one of the big questions asked was, why is StarCraft II so much more death y than Brood War? Now, see, in Brood War, battles were smaller, pathing of AI was different, and you'd have more micro battles rather than, you know, a tank making a big group and doing an A move across the map with your big ball of death army. Death balling. Now, David Kim responded to that the death ball comes from the armies in StarCraft II being easier to move around and control because of better pathing and unlimited unit selection. Now, he says they've been working on having more opportunities for micro armies and positioning them correctly and that they have done this more toward the end of Wings of Liberty and today in Heart of the Swarm, but they haven't perfected it yet. Now, they're wanting to offer more harassment opportunities to players that can create more action. This may suggest that in Legacy of the Void, the new units revealed could be more harassment-oriented. Now, if you want to see the rest of the questions and answers along with our own analysis, make sure you check those show notes and head over to blizzpro.com for the full post. All right. Enough with that, let's talk Diablo. Stay a while and listen. So this week, community manager Nevalistus revealed that any items dropped before the 2.0.1 patch will be unable to have their stats rerolled through enchanting. The reason behind this is because certain legacy items, when enchanted, became you know, disproportionately strong compared to the new items, and that is not their intent. Seems reasonable, right? Well, certain members of the Diablo community feel otherwise, very strongly and loudly, with shouting matches on how Blizzard has duped the community, that there was false advertising that people claiming they'd lost money because they bought items from the real money auction house, and one guy is even threatening to sue Blizzard over it. To which we say something Blizzard cannot. If you're one of these people, you are fucking stupid. And you have no real sense of reality or how it works. In fact, if Blizzard hadn't done this, you would have been the first ones to bitch and moan about how unbalanced these things are and how it's ruining your game. Yes, we know. Shut the fuck up. Moving on. A piece of good news for the majority of players is a change to the storage system in Diablo. Crafting materials are being condensed into two tiers and increasing the stacks of many other commonly hoarded items. Gems and material stack sizes have been increased as well. Another thing to help with your stack size is another stash tab that will be available for purchase so you can buy an additional 14 slot expansion. Now, the extra space will require Reaper of Souls, of course. All right, let's talk Hearthstone. Pull up a chair by the hearth. So are you curious as to what the Hearthstone team has been up to since the game went into open beta? Well, this week, during an interview with Hearthpone, lead designer Eric Dodds and senior game designer Ben Brody sat down and discussed a number of topics, ranging from you know, the reasoning behind the nine-deck limit to what we can expect before Hearthstone graduates from open beta into full release. Now, on the subject of what's left to do before the game is good to go, Dodds and Brody discussed implementing a previously mentioned reconnect feature. This would allow dropped players to hop back into the game, presumably with an accompanying time limit, as opposed to just taking a loss. This would be absolutely a godsend, especially in the arena where some people are actually investing money into the specific mode of play. Not everybody has Google Fiber like me, so, you know, that becomes an issue. Now, card decks and golden heroes were also brought up again. Both features were first mentioned at BlizzCon last year, awarded to players after completing certain criteria similar to quests. Hamilton Chu mentioned the idea of purchasable card backs during a recent interview. 
It seems fair to assume at this point that some cosmetic features will be obtained through completing certain in-game objectives, while others, we'd hope different ones, will be purchasable outright from an upcoming incarnation of the Hearthstone shop. Dodds also lightheartedly mentioned that the team was working on correcting the bug that causes minions to, you know, just sort of randomly swap places on the board. Now, that should be music to all of our ears. While it's been a little entertaining to watch minions dance around on the board, it's decidedly inconvenient when the match hinges on certain cards receiving timely buffs. Now, hopefully, as Hearthstone draws nearer to full release, we'll see, we'll come to learn about the team's plans for all of the aw upcoming awesome cosmetic features. Now, it's time to debut a new segment. We've got a working title right now. We're going to call it right now Blizz Pro Topic of the Week. And, you know, if you have better name suggestions, feel free to throw that in the comments, too. All right. So recently, Hearthstone executive producer Hamilton Chu did an interview with Chinese website NGA.178.com. Right? Discussing the future of Hearthstone. Now, there are a number of interesting tidbits about what's to come, a lot of which pertain to the aesthetic features such as card backs, game boards, and even alternate heroes. The example was Stormwind's King Varian Rin subbing in for the now deposed Garage Hellscream as the warrior hero option. Now, if Team 5 goes forward with this idea, there will definitely be some options, given the sheer volume of characters in the Warcraft universe. So here's what we're wondering. What heroes would you like to see for which class and why? Would you like to rock out as uh, Kael Foss Sunstrider, the mage? How about Prince Arthas as the paladin before he turned into the Lich King? Perhaps you'd rather play as Garona Hellforsen as a rogue. There are so many options out there and we're really curious on your thoughts. Let us know in the comments and next week, hey, maybe we'll discuss a few of them. Now before we close, how about we dig back into those fan emails? I know you love it. So the first one. Or next one, third one, whatever. It's from NFLM19928. We've got another football fan in there. Let's Nephilim, probably. Yeah. All right. So his question, or her question, I don't know. Yeah. What the fuck? How the fuck? Who the damn fuck? And seriously, what the fuck did he fuck? Yeah, I, I see your conundrum. I do, and I, I empathize. So I'm going to try to help out here, all right? A seven-foot-tall popsicle because the dog looks at the wrong side of the toilet seat, Dave, and I'm fairly sure the mustache made him do it. I, you know, don't quote me on that last one. That's, yeah, that's, that's rough. And I'm, I'm really hoping that things get better for you, NFLM1992, where, wherever you are. That's, that's rough going. And our last fan email for the day from Greg Washier. Greg, wa Greg, Greg, was, Greg was here. Yeah, that's... Okay, anyway. Asked, why do you look like a fat, drowned murloc? Okay. Well, Greg Washier, your mom. Burn. All right, that does it for our fan emails and our show this week. Now, subscribe right here on YouTube. And, of course, put down some comments. We love that shit. Now, also, we're on iTunes. Woo, yeah. Look at us go. All right. Twizcast and all of our other awesome blizzpro.tv shows. You want to check those out over at blizzpro.com. Listen, subscribe. We're all over the place. Me, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr. I'm a Goodreads author. My book is available both paperback, right? That's now on Amazon, you know, Kindle version or the paperback, both on Amazon. It's awesome. And, of course, you want to check out blizzpro.com. All the news, reviews, interviews, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment games. Stay beauty, my friends.